We need to get subscribe and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad. Sellafield, England. Now, one of the stores was the most toxic pond in Europe. This is very misleading. There's 8 million liters a day pouring into that ocean. 8 million liters a day. And what that does is it gets out into the currents and it travels and radiates everything. It's so toxic that they have to shoot seagulls if they land there because they become radioactive. It's so toxic that the wind blowing over it becomes contaminated. It's so toxic because you can never ever stop this. You can never turn this off. It's going to take approximately 20 years at 80 transport trucks a day to clean that site up. Now I want you to keep into consideration the word ocean and water through all of this video. 8 million liters a day going into the ocean. You want to burn down your home if you don't recycle your tin cans. The Italian Mafia has been using the sea as a convenient location to dump over 40 ships that were loaded with toxic and radioactive waste into the Mediterranean waters since 1994. This is where all the tourists are hanging out. Think about the fishing industry, how popular that is in Italy and how the people are being poisoned by the isotopes that are leaking out of these drums that will rust out in a matter of a couple of years. You won't see the environmentalists going after a mob in Italy for sinking 40 ships in the Mediterranean. You see, but they sure as hell want to stick you in a mental institution and drug you up if you don't recycle your cardboard. These creatures are not just constrained to Italy. During the 2004 tsunami, over 600 barrels of toxic nuclear waste had washed up on the Somalian coastline. These barrels dated back to the 1990s. And that's the reason why we see Somalia has turned into a wasteland. More here an environmentalist calling out the Italian Mafia when 600 barrels of nuclear waste washed up on the Somalian coastline. Oh no, but they want to murder you, they want to kill you. You don't recycle your pop bottles. 17,000 containers of radioactive waste is just part of the catalog of waste dumped at the sea by the Soviets that we know about. There was 19 ships that are containing radioactive waste were sunk. There was 14 nuclear reactors sunk, including five that still contained spent nuclear fuel. There was 735 other pieces of radioactively contaminated heavy machinery. This could be everything from front end loaders, the bulldozers that was burying the contaminants. And there was a K-27 nuclear submarine with two reactors that are still loaded with nuclear fuel. Dumped into the Kara Sea, right by the Arctic Ocean. The environmentalists calling out the Soviets for 17,000 containers of radioactive waste or 19 ships containing radioactive waste or 14 nuclear reactors with nuclear fuel. No, but I see them want to genetically alter your children. I see them want to blow your children up. Philip and Tracy. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Your own choice. Okay, class, thank you so much for today, and I will see you all tomorrow. Oh, just before you go, I just need to press this little button here. Now, everybody, please remember to read chapters 5 and 6 on volcanoes and glaciation. Except for Philip and Tracy, of course. But it don't stop there. Off the coastline of California, 30 kilometers from San Francisco, a huge, massive city, your loving government dumped 47,500 barrels containing plutonium, cesium, strontium, the most toxic stuff on the planet. That's 2.5 million gallons or 18 million Dixie cups. 
of the most toxic stuff on this planet. This is your government done this to you. This is the people that say they're going to protect you. This is the people that scream about someone might set off a dirty bomb. Dirty bomb. This is what they scream about all the time. One can imagine an enormous amount of disruption, even if a very small uh, dirty bomb were detonated. <laughs> To counter the danger, an unprecedented effort to equip first responders with radiation detectors. From the city to the suburbs, remember. You want to hear an environmentalist calling out their own government when 47,000 barrels are dumped 30 miles off the coast of San Francisco. But they want to have war crimes tribunal for you if you don't recycle your plastic. There's 90,000 bunker ships on the ocean at any given time. 16 of those produce more pollution than all the automobiles on this planet. Of the 7 billion people on this planet, those 16 ships produce more pollution. With 90,000 ships out there, you're looking at 5,625 civilizations on planet Earth every day. The equivalent of 40,000 billion people worth of pollution every day. 40,000 billion people on Earth every day. The animosity equivalent in automotive. Because of those 90,000 bunker ships and the stuff they're burning, you can't, it's supposed to be going to a toxic waste site. It can't be refined anymore. But for some reason, they allow these 90,000 ships out there, these big, massive ships, to burn this toxic waste. That's your acidification of your oceans. That's the pollution you're seeing in your atmosphere. The implications, all these particles, these are nuclei for clouds. There's 3,000 more of these great big ships on the books to be made over the next three years. I hear environmentalists, UT professors, calling for the murder of 90% of the people on this planet, yet 16 container ships produce more pollution than all the automobiles on this planet combined. And there's 90,000 of those ships out there. I hear the environmentalists demonize us for the size of our footprint. They demonize for the bottles and our cans and our plastics. But they don't go after the 65,000 chemicals that are unregulated. They don't have no environmental or human impact studies on it. That's causing all of these issues. That's the tragedy. And uh, that law basically grandfathered onto the market uh, all the chemicals that were already on the market as of 1981, which means 65,000 chemicals have never, ever been assessed for their toxicity or their effect on the environment or human health. I see the same people that are crying for all the insects and the animals all over the planet calling for your death and then also calling for diplomatic immunity. You don't see them calling for justice and what happened in Vietnam, they came trailed that sky with Agent Orange for nine years. They killed every insect, every animal, every plant on that goddamn continent. By U.S. forces to destroy the jungle hideouts of enemy communist forces. The springs went on for nine years. American soldiers came home suffering the effects of Agent Orange. And then there is Japan. Built on a perpetual earthquake fault line is only a matter of time before the big one. When it finally came the nuclear alarm was worst nightmares become surreal. It's a massive destruction unlike anything witnessed by a living human a tsunami flows over Fukushima's prefecture, bringing with it a misery that will outlast any human that can survive it. Over 20,000 have died, the most traumatic death imaginable. News breaks shortly after Fukushima Daiichi's nuclear power plant has reported a power out and failure of backup generators. These are the life-sustaining reactor cooling pumps. Three nuclear reactors are out of control, and without cooling, soon the word comes of explosion and radioactive emergency. The world gets its first picture of explosions, and then Japan throws everything it has at it. Helicopters are put into action to dose the area with water, in a desperate attempt to cool the estimated 600,000 of the most dangerous volatile nuclear waste rods on Earth. Explosions have flung them for miles. These rods were kept above the reactors in pools of heavy water, 30 feet deep, to cool and contain them, but a hydrogen explosion has removed those safeguards in a moment. 4,277 tons 
of nuclear waste on that site, the equivalent of 200,000 Nagasaki bombs. The reactor 3 has 6% of MOX fuel in it. That is 2 million times more dangerous than nuclear rods. And it's not just Fukushima's thousand mile, what I call an iceberg. It's all these toxins from all these sites and all these oceans and all these rivers that are coming out and are irradiating all the marine life on the floor. Irradiating the kelp. It's irradiating all the birds all along that coastline. They're eating stuff that's irradiated from this, from this huge massive plume. Think of it as an iceberg that's a thousand miles rubbing along the coastline radiating all the fish and radiating the salmon and the, and the tuna and the herring and the mackerel and the squid. And think of these big plumes on the planet just like an icebergs. Think of it as a thousand miles of ice coming along your coastline and radiating your sea lions and your seals and your dolphins and your whales and your ear and your coastline itself. And it's all done by just a handful of people. Not the entire planet. This was done by a handful of people. But we're demonizing every human on this planet rather than going after the real issue. And it's going to keep happening until we actually point fingers. Think of each one of these bullets as dirty bombs. Every one of these things are dirty bombs. Your loved ones are going over to foreign countries and whacking that country with dirty bombs. Millions and millions and millions of dirty bombs. And they're coming home and having deformed kids because they were so close to those dirty bombs. Think of Hanford. Billions of gallons dumped on the ground. I know this sounds incredible to people, but there are 40 miles of unlined trenches at Hanford, if you stretch them end to end, into which our federal government your government was dumping radioactive waste from nuclear weapons production and its own reactors even though it seeps right out of those trenches and, and that stuff is all moving through the soil to the Columbia River they're, what they're not telling the public is that they also deliberately dumped out of the high-level nuclear waste tanks in the 1950s and 1960s billions of gallons of liquids into the soil think of this stuff so toxic that a Dixie cup will kill everybody in a restaurant for an hour, every hour, for a billion years. This is probably the most dangerous stuff on the planet ever. Uh, very, very small quantities of this waste. Um, and it's been said that a Dixie cup full of this waste in a crowded restaurant, everyone would be dead in the restaurant inside of an hour. If, even the amount that would fit on the leg of a fruit fly uh, is considered a problem dose, and that's happened at Hanford. Fruit flies have landed on contaminated materials and then flown off to go to the lunchroom and deposit contamination on food and on tables and whatnot, and they've had to evacuate a 20-acre area at the Hanford site because of uh, hot fruit flies and wasps. So this, this waste in these tanks is very dangerous in small quantities, and it has another feature, which is it's dangerous for very, very long periods of time. And is, is demonizing everybody over cardboard and tin cans and plastic the right thing to do? Or is it to go after this real issue? Instead of spending $2 billion a day on the military industrial machine, spend $2 billion a day on cleaning this up and it'll all be gone in no time. It could be all gone in no time. It's that simple. We just can't get ourselves out of this rah, rah, rah nationalism where you just got to go along to get along. And if environmentalists think stopping tin cans and pop bottles and fucking plastic is going to save the planet, they're so fucking lost in the game. They're so lost. We haven't got a hope in hell. We have to have this message out there somehow. Somebody has to do this. And I don't know who that is.